Hello, all you brownies and Pegasus sisters. Welcome to the NBS show. I'm your host, the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill. And now, look deep into my eyes as we hold a very special episode where we talk about ethics. You want to pay attention. You want to be heard. You want to keep listening to this even though I told you to look into my eyes. We don't have any video. With me are my mind slaves, the planeswalker and podcaster extraordinaire, Norman Sanzo. Hello. My name is Norman Sanzo. I am here to talk to you. Excellent. And our Pokemon rep and official mascot, Sapphire Heartsong. Magic carp, 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 magic carp, carp, carp. Oh, God, you could do a remix off that. <laughs> I could actually hear someone doing that remix. Thanks, Safi. You've given the remixers another uh, means to drive us nuts. <laughs> and we are here to talk about mind control in children's entertainment. It's happened more often than you might think, and it remains a thing even in entertainment today. So, no worries for spoilers, unless perhaps you haven't seen Kubo and the Two Strings. I am going to talk about that. Oh, all right, you then. Who here has seen Kubo? I have. Uh, not me. I didn't have the time. And I do have one kind of new show. Uh, it's Transformers Robots in Disguise, the latest season, season 5, I think, or season 4. No, it was season 4. That had something to do with something. Uh, but before we go on ahead, I have to mention that this episode is sponsored by Myself Lag. Thank you so much for the suggestion. And, well, shall we? Oh, we shall. We shall. For it is time to talk about the mind controls. Now, there is a trope on, well, TV tropes. Brainwashing for the greater good. The greater good. The greater good. This puts forth the idea that sometimes a villain is so bad is so dangerous that there's nothing else that can be done except to either kill them or change them in a very severe way. Now, TV Tropes goes on to say that this is a very moral gray area and that the heroes are probably going to be conflicted about this whole thing. My question is, does that really happen nowadays, especially in kids' shows? Not Case really. in point, let's start with the original, the OG, at least from our perspective, Nightmare Moon. Remember that in Luna Eclipse, Twilight specifically said, I saw the elements of Harmony turn her good again. And while I remember little Princess Luna lying amongst the shattered remains of Nightmare Moon's armor, I wondered, hmm, is it really okay that they just turned her good again? Does that mean someone else could turn her bad with something similar? Yeah, in Equestria, good, bad is just an on-off switch. Hmm, but do you have the right to flick that switch? Like you mentioned before, Silver, is the gray area where it's hard to say because, well, in all honesty, if you're bad, we want to turn that switch up to become good because nobody likes an evil person. I like evil people. Yeah, that's why you hang with us. Aha! Yeah! Oh, but let's get a little more wrinkly. Because, okay, Nightmare Moon was trying to coat the world in eternal darkness and Princess Celestia was nowhere to be found. I, I, I can understand if you have to resort to that. But what about Discord? <laughs> Not that episode, but what about him? Yes. Uh, Here's Twilight uh, in in Keep Calm and Flutter On. She is hunting for a uh, a reform spell, which Discord has eaten. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. You have a spell that can reform someone. What does that mean? And what does reform even mean in this context? Exactly. I, I just going by just a name. Safi, what do you yes. think when you hear reform spell? Good. <laughs> not, reform spell. not evil, I guess. You're as society should be or something. I don't know. Hmm. You are what? as what society thinks you should be. Oh, but but that would mean, well, one, us bronies wouldn't be around because society does not look kindly upon this. Yes. Oh, and we will be just another drone in the cog if they get our, their hands on our minds. And is is it harmonious to make everyone behave the same? You know what? Here's the thing when it comes to personalities or characteristics. I think I may be talking off topic when I talk about this, but when it comes to good or bad, it's in shows it's black and white. But when it comes to, well, in depth, characters it's hard to tell because the bad guy for x show 
is doing the right thing for his situation. And the villain and the good guys don't see eye to eye. A good example is Tengen Topa Green Lagan, where Kamina and his crew are fighting against the big hit guy. I forgot what his name is, but... Oh, Lord Geno? Yeah, yes, Lord Geno. He's fighting against Lord Geno because they want to be free. And Lord Geno is oppressing them. Um, Lord Geno is doing this for their own good. Because if they overpopulate, the world or the universe will be destroyed. So when it comes to characteristics, it's a bit deeper than turn switch off, turn switch on. So when it comes to mind control, it depends on who's using it and for what reason. Well, in Twilight's case with Discord, it was like, we can't persuade him to be right, so we'll make him be right. And I don't agree with that call there, because if you just mind control him, and suddenly if he realized that, hey, I'm being mind control, I'm stepping out of this, you're going to have a lot of problems. All the problems. Yes. And it's worth noting that even Princess Celestia, who has even more reason to not be a Discord fan, she didn't use it on him. Why do you think she didn't use it on him? Huh. I don't know. Maybe she didn't have the chance to? She has a crush on him. <laughs> ship. Well, then that's where you use the uh, the, the shippage spell. <laughs> oh, God, no. I want to follow up on what you said, Norman, that good and bad are not so easy to portray. Back in my younger days, when I was just a wee lad, a tyke, really, there was a TV show called The Bots Master. I don't know if anyone in the audience was even aware of this show. It only lasted a season. It was kind of a flash in the pan. But in one episode, the lead heroes, who are sort of this underground resistance fighting a corporate greed uh, that wants to take over the world, of course, <laughs> they developed this machine that can turn bad people good. And this was a show that was trying to be, I won't say realistic, but a bit more grounded in life. And I thought to myself, that makes no sense. You can't just zap someone good. Because you're kind of assuming only good people do good things and bad people do bad things. And yet, Joseph Campbell himself said, everything we do is evil for someone. True. So can you really judge someone by the outcome of their actions as evil? Well, here's the thing. When mind control comes in multiple forms, or comes in so many different forms... It could be in the form of religion, it could be in the form of politics, it could be even the form of media. Uh, we, we don't touch on those two first that I mentioned because yeesh, that's a sticky subject. So there's the direct approach of putting you in a chair and zapping your brain till you agree with the program, uh, similar to Bucky from Captain America. And you got those, um, how would you say, subliminal... Sublim subliminal 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 mind controls where you don't really notice that you're being mind controlled. Me. I do want to follow up on one thing I said. I said you can't judge someone as good or evil based on their actions. But here in America, we have had several terrible shootings uh, in very short order. Yeah, sorry about that. I have no trouble calling the people who perpetrated this evil. It's more on the moral gray of people who just do an action. They might not intend harm, but they cause it. But would you call them evil for if they unintentionally hurt someone? And how do you tell the difference? It's the, it's the moral gray area there because ethics comes to play again. And also context probably. And if you're training with sword play, like let's just say you're the medieval knights and you're training with a sword, suddenly your sparring partner misses the shield guard and you slash him oh no does that make you evil because you slash a fellow combatant because you slash a fellow friend nah the friend was an idiot and he didn't block right but for some people they might think oh he's evil he dare strike his own we shall put him in the torture chamber and put him right and put him in the comfy chair with the whoopee cushion we shall embarrass him <laughs> No oh one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> what is even this podcast right now? We, uh, Monty Python references, apparently. <laughs> yeah. But but let's turn things on their ear a little bit more. We're talking about bad guys. What about Cadence's love spell? Evil. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, really, Sappy? Elaborate. Well, to quote the genie from Aladdin, there are three things you shouldn't be able to do. You can't bring back the dead. You can't... I forgot the one thing other than you can't... Be, or was it two rules? Uh, you, it's three rules. rules. You, can't, you can't kill anyone. You can't kill anyone, you can't wish somebody back from the dead, and you can't make somebody fall in love with you. It's just not right. <laughs> it's not pretty. I don't like doing it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Although if he says I don't like doing it, doesn't that mean he can do it, but he prefers not to? Probably. It's one of those gray areas for him where I can do this, but you ain't gonna like the result, bro. Nah, brah. At least he's nice in that way of uh, Jamie. Yeah. So, so you're saying Caden's action is evil because it contradicts Robin Williams? <laughs> yes, it does. And in all honesty, it's a matter of perspective because for me, I don't think that's a love spell to force people to be in love. I think it's just a reminder for why you guys fell in love in the first place. And that is a common, uh, Argument I see for it, but I'm going to put this out there. Even if the intentions are good, C Cadence is using magic to change people's perceptions, to make up their mind for them. I maintain that what's so awful about mind control is the fact that you're dehumanizing a person and treating them basically as a light switch, off and on. You're I'm not doing wrong. what I yeah, you're not doing what I want, ergo, I will change you to make you behave the way I think you should. Because you are not a human to me, you are a tool. A In a literal sense, not like you're a jerk. But you're... <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Like you mentioned before, so you mentioned Kubo uh, and I mentioned Transformers, and I'm, I'm going to use mine first before you. And in the recent season ender for Transformers Robots in Disguise, season four, I think, and if you guys are interested in watching the show uh, before one spoilers, it's a really good show. You guys should go watch it. So be ready for spoilers. In the season ender, the hierarchy at Cybertron is planning an invasion to Earth. The previous episode mentioned that some of the robots there were being mind controlled and they don't know why. And in the season finale, we see that, oh, the monarchy or the council, uh, con council, was it? Council, sorry, council. The council is, uh, five robots who are Decepticon disguised as Autobots. So they're planning for them to get Megatron back and rule the world, of course. And the reason why they're main controlling the citizens of Cybertron is that most of them are Autobots. So to make it look like, hey, what we're doing is okay, you should agree with us. Like going to war is the right thing to do. And going to war with Earth, by the way. So yeah, that's the right thing to do. Yes, you should follow us. Yay. And It's cool, brah. Yeah. It's all good, brah. Yeah, and Bumblebee and his crew goes to Cybertron and stop the bad guys from doing the evil things. The end. So yeah, mind control in that sense is kind of obvious. Bad guys doing bad things. Good guys have to stop it because of diversity. But then when the good guys do it, does that suddenly make it okay? That's the that's the problem I have when Twilight pulls out a reform spell or Cadence zaps two ponies against their will uh, to behave. It's like, hang on. You don't get to... This is a land where you have at least some degree of autonomy. You get to choose uh, how you apply your talents. You get to choose who your friends are. You do not... You get to choose who you love. And if uh, love is not working out, it's not someone else's right or business to come in and, and decide for you. Mm. Now, if, now, if Cadence had approached these two ponies and said... Look, I, I know something about love. I can sense your history. And she reminded them of those times them herself in person with some transparency. Would that have been better? Technically, she's still influencing their minds. But it's something that they kind of agreed to. 
So they agreed to. Now, would that fall in the same category as when Rarity flirts with a guy? <laughs> uh, that is a different kind of mind control, my friend. <laughs> One that I have experienced personally before, and I'm set for it. Well, let's be honest. The, I think there's very little mind involved in the controlling. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, oh. You're thinking of something else. Oh, you see, I'm dumb. Oh. Safi, what's your view when Rarity turns on the charm for a dude? Well, the feminist part of me is like, that whore. <laughs> really? But then I think to myself, eh, if he, if he got what you got flown up, I don't know, bleh. It's just sort of hey, bleh? What's to your advantage at the same time? I mean, sometimes they're good for survival. I mean, they have charm as a D&D statistic for a reason or stat. Bleh. Okay, you lay on the charm. Do, do you roll a critical? A high 20. That is a good question. But Silver, um, let's take it back a bit and mm -hmm. uh, define the definition of mind control here because we're all over the place. We're talking about the most obvious one to the most subtle one. So what is mind control for you? In the context of a show or in real life? Because we do have mind control in real life, but it's accomplished yeah. through different ends. True. So, you know what? Let's try and reel it back in in show because we were all over the place with what we were trying to mention. All right. Well, how would you define it, Norman? Hmm. I would say the most obvious one where X bad guy would use um, X machine to manipulate the minds of the general public or a person to do what they're what they want to do. A good example of this was um Bucky from Captain America. He was a villain in the sense that he was being controlled by Hydra. It was simple as that. Our heroes being controlled. Even I think that happened in one of the newer comics, like Captain America something, where he was being controlled by Hydra, something like that. Oh well yeah. Captain America Steve Rogers this has angered a lot of fans. He is he turned out to be a Hydra sleeper agent. Yeah, and instead of instead of breaking free of his mind control, however, he decided, well, I'm in charge now. And he began a campaign to take control of Hydra itself. And embrace the evilness. <laughs> Alright, so that's your definition, Norman. What Safi, when I say mind control, what do you think of? Magic carp, 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 <laughs> magic carp, carp, carp. <laughs> Carp. Are you going with that seriously? Yes. <laughs> oh god. She's laying on the earworm. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I can't get it out of your head. Uh, that's true. That is a certain mind influence, but at the but I know where it came from, so I can say curse you, Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> curse you and your trippy remix. <clears throat> so I guess then it's on it's on me to come up with another definition. Yes. I'll say, I'll say that I would define mind control as exerting. Well, let's see here. I don't want to use control in this in the very definition. Exerting influence over a person's thoughts against their without permission, through means either magical, physical, or other, which leaves a pretty broad definition. Oh yeah, very broad. And a show that does this fact without being uh, quote unquote mind control was. Fast and the Furious 6, was it? Where... Oh. Is that the most recent one? I'm not sure. Actually, one of the most recent examples of mind control that I can definitely foresee. Has any of you... Have any of you played Super Mario Odyssey just yet? Uh, no, I don't have a Switch, but I do know the video that you're talking about. I, I've yes. watched some of the gameplay. I know what you're talking about. You get it to mind... It is non-consensual! But this one, the greats are good. <laughs> the greats are good. The greats are good. Shot at. <laughs> no, but still, um, like uh, what I was saying, but still, like uh, what I was saying is that in one of the Fast and the Furious sequels, uh, Dom, the guy playing Vin Diesel, betrayed the crew and, well, joined the bad guys. And the reason for this was because, uh, one of his ex-girlfriends is having his baby. Yay. So, uh, the bad guys kidnap 
her and force him to work for them. If not, girlfriend gets axed with the baby. So you see the dilemma here. So that's another form of mind control. Not really being well, that mind would... control. <laughs> that's more manipulation. Or blackmail. True, but still you're doing something that you're not happy with. You're not happy with, but at the same time, Vin Diesel makes a choice. I'm going, to, I'm going to betray my team to save my baby, and I'll do it in the most gravelly voice possible. Yes, but still, it's one of, well, it's not quote-unquote mind control, but it's a form of manipulation. And if you think about mind control, it is a form of manipulation. It's a form, but I, I'm going to say that mind control fully removes a person's ability to choose. As cruel as it sounds, Vin Diesel's character could make a very difficult choice. Hmm. True that, true that. But either way. Hmm. Uh, so we've talked about Nightmare Moon was forcibly changed. But no one, but I don't think anyone really cried foul since she was trying to kill everyone. Yeah, true. But did she really kind of got mind control? Or was it the spell that brought her back? That, that was the comics that implied that, oh, the, the nightmares took over my mind. Yeah, I've never been a big fan of that. Nah, that one is ain't canon, yo. Ain't canon, yo. Yo, dog, for shiz. Yeah. Yo, me. Yo, what up in the his aid? It's me, your bro tisserie. <laughs> oh, boy. Why? Anywho. Uh, my punishment. <laughs> for, for an earworm, yes. But then, going by our definitions, going back to Cadence, is that mind control? I... Mm. Eh, that, that, like I mentioned before, to me, that is just a reminder spell. A reminder spell, okay. I feel but... like it could be mind control if taken the wrong way. Yeah, like... the, the, that's the thing, like, one person's perspective. To me, I kind of don't see it, but I've been hanging around with people who say it is, and I kind of can see their point. Yeah. I mean, we have seen Twilight use a memory spell to undo Discord's manipulation. Uh, true. Oh, uh, talking about mind control, um, Season 2, Lesson 0, the one that needed spell. Oh, yes, that is also a form of mind control. No one would say that was for the greater good. Ah, no, that was just for uh, personal gain. Like, Twilight's personal gain. Find a friendship problem and try to escalate it to 11. Oi, oi, oi. Twilight, please. Okay, Twilight did it. She knows she was wrong. She did it willy-nilly on impulse. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's part of why I, like, everyone looks down on Twilight for doing this. Even Celestia has a reason to be angry with her. But then Cadence goes walking through town and just zaps people in the middle of the day. And it's like, is no one raising an issue with this? I think it comes to, does how does this affect me? Does it trouble me? Yes, no? Well, there's another question. Uh, my definition included doing something against a person's will or without their consent. Do, if I say, I want you to make me think this way, is that, if, if I were to go to Cadence and say, I'm having an issue with my girlfriend, uh, I really want her, I really want us to get along, can you just zap me into compliance? <laughs> Would that be the right thing to do? No. You won't solve the problem. No. It won't solve. Okay, well, there, there. Now we're getting to something. If it doesn't solve the problem, then is that the only reason it's wrong? Uh, the thing is, when for me personally, when mind control comes to play, it's always negative. And when you're try, when you're mentioning cadence here, it's a fine line between how you interpret the situation and scene. In all honesty. If I were to break it down and if I were to nitpick the situation, I could have said that that was from Twilight's point of view and Twilight was still a filly, so she didn't really understand the situation. I could say that, but I ain't going to say it because it will put into headcanon and things will be going haywire and nobody really likes to kind of debate, oh, this is what I think, this is my headcanon, and my headcanon is correct. Yeah. 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 But in the end, like, if Caden is using mind control or not, I don't know. It's hard for me to say because I personally don't think so. And I've said my reason why. Alrighty. Well, continuing on with our, de with testing our definitions then, let's w return to rarity. 
she's not using magic per se, but she is influencing how people think and behave using her looks. And charms, yes. But that's mostly using, well, <laughs> in DMD, uh, your charisma. If your charisma is high, you can talk your way to anything. And I, I don't think that is mind control. Like, nah, that, that ain't mind control. Manipulation, yes. Mind control, no. All right. So, and I'd agree with that. I, I don't view it as mind control. I could take a cold shower and say no, <laughs> maybe not in that order. <laughs> yes. But talking about mind controls, we're kind of missing the three most villainous in MLP that do mind control, or did mind control for this case, is the Sirens. Adagio, Arya, and Sonata. They're obviously using magic to manipulate the school. So, yes, uh, in that scenario there, they're using magic to manipulate the student body, and the main six plus one had to kind of put a stop to it. But note that they are likewise using a counter spell, which could also be influencing the school body to change their attitude. For me, when I think of a counter spell, it's negating the first spell. So in all honesty, the student body is not being mind controlled. They're just nodding their head for a catchy tune. That may have a spell behind it. Here's what I, here's what I'm getting at. It's easy to say, oh, all mind control is instantly bad by default. And yet, sometimes we use mind control spells or mind influencing spells are used to fix damage, to bring someone back to their true self. So is it the spell itself or is it the intention with which it's used? I believe it's the intention because like he said, you know, it can be used for good and evil. Like... It doesn't matter, it's just a spell. You have the option to mind control, but the drive to use such a thing is for whether or not the person has good intentions or not. And even then, the fact that, you know, good and evil could be debated depending on the person, because the main rule with villains, or at least it should be, or possibly is, I don't know, they think they're doing good, but it's having a negative impact without their foresight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or is it hindsight? Like, they don't even realize what they're doing unless it's in hindsight, if they realize it at all. Or if they just have such a warped sense of things. Yes. You know, so, but then what about, back to Kane's and the Love Spell then? She thinks she's doing something for the good of all. I still raise issue with it. And, well... It goes back down to the fact of how does this affect the couple in the long term? Because, hey, if they're having a loving relationship, even though, quote-unquote, it's a lie, who are we to say that it's wrong? But also to bring up one of your points, Norman, if I come to case and say, zap me so I agree with my girlfriend, you mentioned that doesn't fix the problem. True, true. I remember the couple that was arguing they were talking about not liking each other's friends or uh, flagrant spending. No, no, Silver. You mentioned this before and I brought it up before. And it's not that the boy doesn't like her friends. It's just that he was complaining about her spending a lot of money on Hoover Cures. And she mentioned that, oh, all well, my friends can do it. Why can't I? Something like that. Well, hang on, I'm going to look up the transcript because this is an important point. Yes, true that. But I'll carry on with what I have to say. With mind control, it's it's a really tough game here because it's been used so much to the point where mind control is just a trope where it couldn't really happen in real life, could it? I'm not going to ever touch that one. But still, it's one of those scenarios where shows use it too often and it becomes a joke. They're kind of the plot point or plot engine to run the show, usually done in a filler episode if you're watching some anime. Silver, did you get your transcript? Yes, I did. All right, then. So um, that's one way of mind control. Anyway, Silver, please do share what, with us what you found. Yes, I think it, more in line with what you said, Norman. Uh, Wildfire, the fem- the mayor, says, I'm going for a hoof of cure in that. Is that Lucky Clover? You are not going. I am, I am. Mm-hmm. I already paid for three this month. I 
no, my girlfriends are all getting their hose done, and you said that own that she gets cut off. Mm-hmm. Please, we've done this at least. So there's there's an argument between finances, but also Wildfire is really putting a lot of effort into matching her what her friends are doing. And so that's causing tension, but does Cadence's intervention fix that problem? Well, it depends on the scenario, because like I mentioned before, uh, to me, what Cadence is doing is not really mind control, but uh, calming or dousing the flames of hate and igniting the flames of love, because those two fell in love for a reason, and Cadence is just reminding them of that reason. And in all honesty, if you sit down and talk slowly about that situation there and have an understanding like yes the girlfriend there or wildfire here should have not spent that much because he already spent on three this month she's just going because all her friends are going and the poor guy he's spending all that money for almost nothing like they could have saved that money to do something else and i'm just assuming that they're a married couple so they have to be more frugal with their spending because life. Like a life. Indeed. Get a life. <laughs> oh my. But Silver, with the revelation, what do you think now? Have your opinion changed or still the same? Mm, it remains the same. I still think that the underlying issue of finances, how they act with friends, how those friends are causing, uh, I guess, wildfire to make these choices... Ha, ha, ha. Why? Sorry. Why ha, ha, ha? Wildfire. That's her name. Seriously. I know, (laughs) but he he made a pun out of it. Never mind. Ah, (laughs) I didn't know this. Oh, I do it by instinct now. (laughs) God, no. (laughs) But I I think that Cadence's intervention didn't really solve the problem. If, If anything, at best, it just got, it just called a truce for a little bit. But unless they can talk it out, which they were so busy uh, cooning over one another that I didn't get the sense they were going to talk it out. Mm, probably. Now, compare that maybe to... Here's something we haven't talked about in Mind Control. Fluttershy. The stare. Uh, the stare is not Mind Control. Really? Because the because when she uses it on chickens and the like, they seem to do as she pleases. That is more out of fear rather than being controlled, like, oh god, no, please don't hurt me. Really? I didn't get the sense they were afraid. Zavi, you want to weigh in on the, the, the stare? I feel like it's, like, her weapon to, like, uh, as a behavioral tactic, like, when it comes to animals. There's not really much to it, other than when you're trying to train a pet, you often have to resort to lots of behavioral instances like with dogs for example you have to give like certain commands due to the language barrier in order to indicate what you want like i had an uncle come over who was experienced with dogs like he owned 54 dogs at a time oh wow that's how good he is all right 54 good how did he have time actually he lived in colorado he had a bunch of bred samoyeds and yes, they were all trained. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. Hard work paid off anyways. I feel like it's not really mind control. Like for an animal, I know that sounds so cruel and whatnot coming from me. Mm-hmm. But it feels like something that you would do for like a pet that you were training, you know? I understand. I don't feel like it's like super mind control. Like it's going to damage... You know, their psyche because of the incident. I feel like it's something that, you know, Fluttershy would have to do in order to train her pets to do what she needs them to do. And when you mention pets, like, I'm going to go for the opposite end here with the season one Dragonshy where she stared out a dragon. And in all honesty, that ain't mind control. That's just fear. (laughs) She definitely looked him in the eye. I didn't get the sense that he was using the stare, not in the same way. Because the first time we saw the stare, I think, she used it on some chickens that were riled up. If I remember right, she got them to back up in line in sort of this dreamlike state, and they even closed the chicken coop door behind them. My dog does the 
the same thing, actually. Big friend? My my dog actually closes the door behind him when he goes to... in his cage. I was about to say, your dog goes in a chicken coop? <laughs> no. No. When, when, see, the, when you mentioned that, Silver, it's like, I have a baseball bat. You want to go in the room? Yes. Please don't hurt us. Close door. But see, I never got the sense they were afraid. They just seemed to be blank. Their minds were gone. Maybe I need to rewatch that episode. It's been a while. Well, there you go. Now, she also tried to use the stare on Discord, and it didn't work. <laughs> I feel like it's because Discord is more sentient. That and certain animals are harder to train. Like, they won't listen right away out of spite. Oh, okay. But now, <laughs> there's that dog. <laughs> Oh, don't, don't be mad at the puppy. Uh, I will be mad at the puppy. No. He keeps coming in my room to chew on my stuff. Because puppy loves you. Uh, yeah, like yeah. they do. Hmm? It's a very dog thing to do. Yes. Most of the Is time, it? though, I'm at school, though, is the problem. Anyways. Anyways. We're at odds about what really constitutes... Mind control because it is mostly a fantasy based idea. Mm -hmm. But I do find there are parallels in the real world. Case in point, our penal system here in America, it's designed that if you do a crime, you are sent to jail, and the hope is that that will reform you, or at least fear of consequence will keep you from doing the wrong. That statement there is true, Silver, and in all honesty, yes. When you're young, you're taught to not to lie, not to steal, not to do bad things because there's always something bad will happen. Over here, it will be caning. Over there, I got no idea what you guys do. So yes, uh, you'll get schooled by parents and you'll get spanked. So that's one form of quote-unquote discipline, if you want to say that. I'm not 100% sure what about you. Like, I'm not sure what you, your views are. But then also, if you had the option to just press a button and get people to behave, would that not be less expensive for everyone? Are you talking about the shock colors, Silver? Because it ain't even fun. No, no shock colors, but something a bit less easily tampered with. I'll give you a sci-fi example. Babylon 5, first season, they introduced the idea that it, a, a serial killer, he was sentenced to either permanent imprisonment on the station, sent back to Earth, or death of the personality, where a telepath wipes you clean and implants a new personality so you can be a functioning member of society. Oof. Sounds now, this is on paper. On paper, it sounds very utilitarian. The question is, is that still the morally right thing to do? I guess we'll have to see the rep sheet because do you really need this person in your life? Because there's a death penalty for a reason. Well, even the death penalty is hotly contested. Like, come on, that, that person there killed people. Like, we need to see the rap sheet first before we drop down the death penalty. Oh, well, well, in this particular episode, you find, I don't know if you find this funny or horrifying, you actually do get to see inside the killer's mind. He has a choir of victims to sing him into heaven. Uh... What? I don't mean to derail the conversation with, uh... With talk of Babylon 5, oh, though, it is an awesome show. Yeah, true, true, true. But now, in, in that scenario Never there... <laughs> but in that scenario there, Silver, I would say that, yes, the mind wipe thing and implant a new one would be the right thing to do. Also, offing him off would be also the right thing to do. In a way, I could see how that would be plausible. At the same time, my more standpoint and beliefs believe otherwise. You have to remember, Safi... The guy killed a lot of people to get a choir, and a choir is really huge. A lot, to be exact. You might see he acquired. Yeah, there might be no going back for this guy, so okay. Yeah. Well, and, and that brings us to a topic about the morality of this idea. Because ultimately this is an idea, it's sort of an intellectual question, because we don't have spells. That can change people's lives. We have chemicals mm. Ooh, yeah. uh, and the like, but I don't know if there's a one-to-one -one comparison. But it's mostly you have the power to do it, should you? 
Hmm. And while I norm- normally I come down on the side of you shouldn't, I respect the individual, respect the privacy and sanctity of one's mind. But there are some cases where I feel like you're not given much of a choice. Case in point, and this is where my Kubo warning comes into play, hmm. if you've not seen the ending to Kubo and the Two Strings, hit the pause button, go watch it because it's an awesome movie, and come back. And... Norman, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to spoil it for you. It's okay. I kind of remember because I think Kubo was based on a Japanese story. Quite possible. Well, it was very rude in the culture. But at the end, the head villain, this this emperor of the moon and Kubo's grandfather, he and Kubo are fighting basically to the death. And he's proving to be super powerful, far beyond anything Kubo can match. And so gathering the power of the local village people, why (laughs) MCA, they basically wipe the grandfather's mind and make him immortal, a mortal, not immortal. Hmm. And so he is going to spend the rest of his mortal life believing he's one thing and basically living a lie. But the alternative was he was going to kill everyone. Now, given that situation, it's kind of funny how the rules change when you realize you're looking at the end of the world. And is anything truly off limits? And with that there, there's the real question. Like, uh, with what Kubo did, was it the right thing? And in that scenario there, yes, it was. Because if she didn't, we'd all be dead. Although I should mention that uh, basically scripting this new life for the grandfather, the citizens of the town mention how he gives them money every time he comes by and he's so generous with all their stuff there's an element of uh gold digging (laughs) with these folks a little bit of opportunism perhaps yeah Yeah. even when you're doing something for which you have no choice you have a choice in how you uh conduct yourself oh yeah i mean here's the thing um he's fine and dandy now because he's mind control and he's all good and whatnot but just imagine what happens if he remembers. Yeah. <laughs> er. Oh no. It ain't gonna be fun. Or at the very least, hey, I'm back. You're all gonna die. <laughs> yes. And maybe that's another issue I have with the idea of mind control usually. A change brought about by someone through reflection and and challenging themselves, kind of what Starlight Glimmer went through. That is something that's earned and you can't take that away very easily unless you strong arm them but that's a form of reformation the right way to do it right yes but mind control as a shortcut to reformation it can be undone in an instant if anything they can uh it can even be worse when they when the person realizes what you've done insert all the jojo scenes right here (laughs) really which episode i don't remember well, in the um the the third uh, Stardust season, Crusaders. Yes, yeah, Stardust Crusaders. There's a episode where uh, Josuke gets mind controlled. Let's just say the person who uh, mind controlled Josuke, not a very happy ending. Oh, him! I can only imagine. But that's not really mind control. That's manipulation, right? Like. I, 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 he still had conscious. I forgot what happened exactly. I just remember that it happened. Uh, yeah, true. But yeah, he got ora ora ora. No, yeah. No. <laughs> now there, uh, I'll give you guys another example. Back there was a, a DC comic called Identity Crisis. Oh no, was it was it Identity Crisis? There was this was widely hailed. Basically, the wife of a superhero gets murdered. Mm-hmm. And the crew and members of the Justice League gather because they think they know the culprit. It turns out that this same villain assaulted the wife ages ago, and rather than just defeat him, they changed his mind, his personality, to make him less dangerous. And in the events of this comic, this same villain gets his uh, his memories back, and he's even more dangerous because he's now driven by anger by what they did to him. I mean, so do yeah. You- did they really fix it, or did they just make it worse? They made it worse. And here's my point. Again, when I mentioned that mind control is not a good thing, usually when you want someone to turn good, they have to want it. Uh, example is 
uh, one of the beastmen from Green Lagoon. Remember that one character who became immortal? I forgot his name. Oh yes. Yeah, but still, uh, he was a villain. He hated humans, but in the end, he became one of the good guys and respect Kamina for that, and also Shimon. Or at least he became an ally. A good guy and bad guy, like you say, in that world, it was a little harder to to label. A good example here, a good scenario here is, what would have happened if Twilight did the reform spell on Discord? Do you think it's going to be all sunshine and rainbows? <laughs> sunshine, rainbows, and lollipops again. It might have been for a little bit, but all it would take is one nullification and you'd be right back. Yep, and ain't going to be happy. Oh, no. If anything, Discord might be a little bit more... Salty. Uh, violent. Yep. Violent. At the same time, we're playing the what-if game, mm. and the what-if game is always speculation. Oh, yeah, true that. But still, it's one of those scenarios where the mind control trope has been used a lot, but we don't really remember it because probably it's not memorable. Oh, I remember more than a few things. Asking this question makes me think of Babylon 5, DC Comics, The Bots Master. Uh, I watched a review of Stargate Atlantis, but I never saw the episode where they tried to convert one of their enemies by giving him a false identity. Oh, and that never works. Well, and it did not. It did not work at all. You're talking about this topic does spark a few in my head, but I don't remember because I'm trying to remember things in video games because they do use ah now i remember uh pokemon the first movie nurse joy she got my control remember oh not like this <laughs> <laughs> yeah she was my control by mew to become the two yeah mew too mew <laughs> yeah to become the nurse at that place yeah it was strange but brock seems to like her so she's not all that bad right well, this is Brock. If you've got two legs and a double X chromosome, I think you're in good graces. Oh, true that. But still, uh, there's one example there. Uh, well, what else could we bring up? Like video games, there's a lot, but I don't really remember. Mario Odyssey. I don't. I haven't played it, so I don't know all the scenes, but Safi made mention to the mind control in that game. One scene is that you take control of a very powerful opponent to escape a dangerous situation. Honestly, I think people would forgive you that choice in life. It's kind of like with Kubo, and it's like if with maybe Nightmare Moon. If the situation is so dire, you really don't have a, a recourse. You really don't have another means to a solution, at least not one right away. I think people would forgive a breach of the normal etiquette, but it wouldn't be anything to be proud of. It wouldn't be anything to celebrate. And most of all, it wouldn't be something you want to do again. You'd re I'd much rather learn from the experience and be better prepared next time. True that. And, well, talking about going through the experience and learning from it, back to Rainbow Rocks. The sirens did the spell. The girls did the counter spell and save the day. And that scenario there, the spell was warranted. The spell is warranted, but then they don't try to use magic to imp create good vibes at every concert. No, nah, they don't. I, I don't think so. They, they do. Do they? You, wait, you're saying they don't or they do? They don't use their magic to perform. Like, the only time that they do do the magic is for the counter spell. Yeah, they pony up in other situations, but that's not the same thing in my eyes. Although it is kind of funny, Fluttershy does use her tambourine to hypnotize gerbils. Yeah, but they were running amok. Did you not see what they did to Rarity? Yes, I thought it was quite oh, hilarious. Man. She Girl. brought it on herself. She named them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but, anywho, Silver, do you have anything more to add to this? Because I'm running a blank. Well, I feel like we've covered... You know, we've we've seen villains do this. And we know it's bad because they're using people towards very hurtful ends. Mm -hmm. It's more dubious when the heroes do it because you're wondering, is it okay because it's them doing it? No. Does the situation just justify this extreme? Well, there's two ways to look at this because 
whenever a hero uses mind control to do something, in the end it always backfires on them to teach them a lesson, never to do this again. And at some point, if it does work, it's always the long game, where either the villain realizes that he's being mind controlled at a later time, or suddenly gets his memory back and run amok. It's usually that scenario there. Well, I will say it sometimes it does work, like in Kubo. I don't think there's a sequel coming. Oh, okay. But but you're right that more often than not, it backfires. And the reason is there's no such thing as a shortcut. You can't shortcut re- reformations. Mm-hmm. And that is true. No matter how much you want to kind of take the easy way out. And then uh, we also sort of talked about what counts as uh, mind control and what does not. And it's kind of funny that sometimes we'll say, oh, that is totally mind control, and then it's up for debate. No, that's intimidation or manipulation or blackmail. I think you could ask the same questions in those. Is it okay to sometimes blackmail someone? Is it okay to rely on intimidation? Honestly, in, in a case like this, I would point to a um, another video that I found based on a developing video game based on an anime trope. Has anybody ever heard of Yandere Simulator? <laughs> oh, God. Ma foi. Uh, Yandere Simulator. Oh, gosh. I've heard of okay. it. But uh, it, from what I can tell, it's not really... C- uh, okay. Seppi, get your namesake in. <laughs> okay, so there's a um a point in the development where the creator, Yandere Dev, as they call him, made a video displaying, like, this uh, character called Coconut. And basically her story is she has to have dinner with men, as she puts it, (laughs) for money. (laughs) So, like, older men, I mean. And she has to do it because her father has to pay off a debt to a loan shark, that way she could go to school. Now, with some investigation, blah blah blah, in the game, turns out the loan shark's daughter is on campus. So, Yandere chan as they call her, basically goes up to uh, Kokona and says, I found the girl who turns out to be the daughter of the loan shark who is holding this debt uh, over your dad. Basically, she says, you know, I think we should hurt her in order to get the message across. So, Coconut is automatically thinking, like, because this is, like, for Yandere, like, uh, trying to, like, not have to get any blood on her hands in order to kill off, like, one of Senpai's lovers, blah, blah, blah. So, long story short, because the girl who is the Lone Shark's uh, daughter says that, you know, she's basically ungrateful and she cries whenever she wants her daddy to buy her something, they basically go off, they kidnap her, and you'd have to watch the video, but she's manipulated into killing the girl herself instead of Yandere-chan doing it. So, the one gaining... And she gets arrested, so the one gaining it all in the end is yonder. That and sounds pretty my... darn dark. It is very, very dark. Goodness gracious. I like the video. <laughs> the under is similar to it's not a happy, happy game. No, it happy, is happy, not. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh... yes, it's, it's terrible. Basically, the plot of it is driven to murder. Oh, God. But anyhow, on a brighter note. <laughs> on a br- br- brighter note, he says, yeah, let's go back to Pony's brainwash because yeah. that's somehow cuter. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Uh, Nobody died when Twilight lied. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but still, um, I, we've been doing this for an hour now. So do you have anything more, Silver? Because if not, we can wrap it up. I think we've we've stated our cases, and really it's not a definitive answer. It's just raising questions for hopefully people to consider. Mm, true that, true that, because over here on my end, I find it hard to debate because, well, I don't know much media. I don't know much about it. But in the end, when you really, really, really think about it, there's no 
right or wrong. There's no black or white. Everything is in the gray. Where it's a point of view for the greater good, for the greater good, or so on. Because, like we mentioned, it's a matter of perspective. In any case, that wraps up our debate or discussion of mind control. And remember, you all have the freedom to choose what you think. Eh? Eh? Um, we forget to mention the Hypnotoad. No. Oh, yes. All, we're, we're all hail the Hypnotoad. Yeah. All hail the Hypnotoad. Well, although um. we could go on about this. <laughs> no. Um. no, I believe... I. I believe that for next week, we need to return to our fun, fun pony ways. Yes. What are we going to do, Silver, next week? Because I literally forget what episode 15 is. Well, let's see here. We have, we have just, last time we were talking about, uh, fame and misfortune, which was indeed misfortune. Now we get to talk about Spike's misfortune in triple threat. Oh God. It's an oh, episode no. I like. <laughs> Despite the fact that it's not a great showing for Spike. Yes. But in any case. <laughs> yes, yes. That will be our topic du jour for the next MBS show. Hmm. So, anywho, if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. If you really support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast, uh, deleted contents and exclusives, and also a huge thank you from me. i like to thank Lurker Cat, Demdragatoria, Starstream, Master of Lag, and also Amy. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. Anyway, Silver, take us out. Well, guys, thank you for listening to our discussion. We hope it's given some good food for thought. And as ever, I am the Silver Quill. And I am Norman Sanzo. I am Sapphire Heart Song. And we're saying adios. See ya. Bye-bye. Silver, why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Because I'm a masochist. <laughs> Okay.